Hi, I'm Bob Martin. I teach at the Wheeler School in the Art Department. I've been here for 25 years, and I also take care of the Wheeler Archives, which is how the project came about in the first place. Hi, I'm Bob Sullivan. Uh, I've been teaching at Wheeler for 14 years. I teach in the middle school, art, and I also coach a little baseball, and um, I assisted Bob in the, in the mural project. My specialty is photography. Bob's is ceramics, so that's the other, the other sort of marriage between the two media. Initially, Dan Miller came to us, the headmaster of Wheeler. He came to the art department about two years prior to the project's completion, asking if we had any ideas to, to spruce up the visual appearance of, of the campus. On the outside of Wheeler Hall, the three window areas, that, those were boarded up with plywood uh, so that light would not leak into the, the theater. The theater space is directly behind that wall. And it, it looked horrible. It was just painted brown and you know, peeling paint and weathered, blistered uh, plywood. My idea was to, to use those three spaces as a possible location for a picture. So I went to the archives, and there was really no question for me what, about which image to choose. The, the photograph of Mary Wheeler with her students in Paris, 1890. Uh, it, it's the most beautiful photograph that we, that we own uh, that, that shows the early life and history of the school. The process at that point was to figure out how we would get that image um, onto tile and then into those, into those window spaces. So we had a lot of experimenting to do, given that we hadn't done this type of work before. It's a plein air painting session. There's a model seated under a parasol. They're all working directly from the model, and you just have this really lovely afternoon light filtering through the, the leaves of the trees. Mary Wheeler is sort of in the middle of that group. I was able to identify her by her glasses and also by the painting that she's working on in the photograph, because I've seen that in other photographs that we have of, of, um, of her artwork. Bob's expertise with you know, photography and his knowledge of Photoshop, he was able to break the photo down into grid squares and actually print each grid square enlarged at the same size as the tiles that we purchased. The total number of tiles for the, for the, for the entire mural is 462. So it breaks down to, we, we, have, we have a row of seven and then it's 20, each panel is 22 tiles high. And we, we did a lot of experimenting, different kinds of tiles, low mm -hmm. fire, high fire. Each grid square was broken down into values. I think we had eight values, eight. right? Eight values. Mm -hmm. We would put them over the tile with a layer of a ceramic, it's, it's sort of like a carbon paper, and we'd literally trace each shape. <laughs> it was very tedious yeah. work, you know, we'd, we'd trace each shape and then number the values. And then we take the glazes and we lay down the, uh, each, each value in their proper locations and then fire them. We love the fact that it's, it's got such a central location in the courtyard, you know, at, at, at any given time during the, during the school day, you know, the bell will ring, you know, students from upper, middle, lower school, Hamilton, they, they're all sort of moving through the courtyard on their way, and, and here's this, this image that just looks over that, that very, from that very central key spot that, that brings us back to the very roots of our, of our school, that we, you know, we were formed by a woman artist who, who wanted to set up an art school for girls. It was a radical idea to, to come up with a, an art school for girls in Providence, Rhode Island in 1883. And so we, we like that that is sort of just really visually emblazoned on, on the side of that, of that wall. And that's Wheeler Memorial Hall, too, so the, the building itself is named for her. I was approached by the Wheeler School because uh, Dr. Chasing had offered them the opportunity to have a number of sculptors uh, present ideas for sculptures that would be placed around the campus, either here in the urban campus or out in East Providence. Um, and I chose a site here uh, in front of the, what's now named the Chazen Gallery. And the piece came about as a way of sort of identifying the entrance to the gallery as a persona. The piece itself is very figurative, it's very welcoming, and the idea is that here is this form and shape which sort of introduces you to the element of coming into 
a gallery and seeing art, and then that's a personal experience. And then the piece is made of um, granite, the kind of green granite that I like to use with uh, some cast glass elements. There's actually sort of a head, a head of glass that sits at the top of the figure, and then a volume of glass which becomes kind of the core or the heart of the figure, and in that is a gilded seed or shape. So the figure becomes one which hopefully describes to the people entering the gallery that viewing art is something that happens both on an intellectual level, but also on a kind of intuitive level. I went out to the farm and um, spent a great deal of time, you know, several hours out there checking out, photographing, walking the entire property, which is quite extensive actually. I sort of settled on this site here because it, it has command of a, a fairly large area. It's at the end of a football field and it's below this house that's, that's part of the property. And um, I wanted something that was completely approachable by students because that's the primary audience for the piece. I mean, it, you know, it sort of belongs to them. And I wanted to do something in granite. And like a lot of the other pieces I've done recently, I knew I wanted it sequential somehow or other. The biggest one, the sphere, is four feet in diameter, and the small one, I believe, is something like two. I sort of surround myself with all the information about the project, and, and the ideas just come in. You know, it's sort of an unexplainable phenomenon. Basically, it, it, it just showed up pretty much complete, in my opinion. <laughs> Which is the way it works. I mean, it's like the creative process. You know. I was um, asked to uh, propose a project for the, the Wheeler panel to review. Um, with the understanding that a handful of artists um, would be invited to present proposals um, to sort of kick off a developing program of public art commissions at Wheeler. How many times do you get the chance to present a proposal that says, I've never worked on this scale before, I've never worked with this technology, <laughs> um, the building doesn't exist yet. <laughs> And this is sort of what I'm thinking, but I can't tell you exactly what it's going to look like until I can really start playing with this process. You want to you go for it? And they say yes. So the logistics of this couldn't be more fantastic. It's so inspiring. It's inspiring to work with people who want this thing that you can't describe. They seem to want it as much as you want it. The artwork that, I, that I've been doing for years is a, a low relief repoussé metal artwork. It's, forming and forcing metal out from behind to create uh, a low relief from the front. Well, I got a request, I received a request from the Wheeler School asking me for a proposal for a sculpture that was funded by Dr. Chazen. And so I took the opportunity to um, step out of my comfort zone and work on a large scale sculpture for outside. It was a stretch in that it was a large scale piece that I didn't make myself. I'm usually crawling over every square inch of the work I do and doing it all, but as this was a large, heavy piece, it's um, quarter-inch marine-grade aluminum, I chose to work with a fabricator, Paul Emerall, Emerall Custom Fabrications, out in Seekonk, Massachusetts, and he does a lot of sculpture for a lot of museums, and he fabricated it and painted it, and he did a really fantastic job. It was really rewarding in that I could go beyond my own capabilities and utilize someone else's incredible skill and equipment to get the job done. I worked off of what was actually happening out there, which was a lot of sporting events, 
and um, a lot of activity. So I started thinking in terms of a triumphal arch initially. Well, I was looking at all the traditional ones. I was looking at the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, just doing a lot of art history research, and a lot of them were really ornate. And a lot of them had um, depictions of what occurred or the events that occurred, or a lot of them had bar relief on them. So I initially thought I might go that route because that's what I do. And then as I started drawing it out and working it out, I started becoming more and more minimalistic on the landscape and I started pulling detail away. Drawing it, pulling more and more detail away from the object and to eventually it got to a point where I actually just split the arch into two components. So now it exists as two separate components that are on the verge of coming together, which I thought was a nice metaphor for the sporting events and the other activities that we were it's painted with a uh, marine grade paint that's used by the Coast Guard as well as commercial aircraft, so it's a very long lasting surface, very durable. It's a vast landscape. From one side, it's this huge sweeping field, and from the other side, it's through the woods. So I painted it red because I wanted it painted on the landscape. I didn't want it to blend. I didn't want it to clash, but I wanted it to appear as if, as if the object were actually painted on the landscape. And you can see the landscape around you in the arch itself. So it was nice to be able to have such a wonderful sight to drop it, as in, and in this way people can encounter it as a sculpture rather than just use it as a gateway. I would consider myself a, a painter, but also I put the pieces together, it's the whole. So I make separate pieces and put them together. This was chosen for Hamilton. Hamilton is for uh, children who have dyslexia and they teach them how to read. I had a kid who went to Hamilton, so I have some insight of what Hamilton's really about. I think as the years have gone by, it's gotten more and more established and an easier thing to do is go to Hamilton and be part of Wheeler. I think in the beginning it might have been harder. I met with everyone at Hamilton, all the teachers and the head of school. You know, I was just interested in what they would like to see in this piece because it's a new building, it's really exciting, they're doubling their space, and it's when you first walk in, it's an important piece, and I wanted to hear what they had to say about it. It's a special school, it's a special situation. I kind of took some of the things they said and then I put my own stuff in it. I kind of felt like I wanted it to just to be about sort of life in a loose way, like, or what kids think about in school, and I have a clock. I put five of three, you know, time to get out of school. <laughs> I mean, that's... <sighs> I wanted it to be a positive piece. I wanted it to have a lot of things that people would come back and look at. They're going to see it all the time, so I was hoping that they would see different things when they looked at it. Some new things that I did for this piece, which I'm excited about. In the past, they were all the same size. So I decided to do different levels and see what that did, which I like. They're fun. For this, I wanted it to be bright, happy, sort of, grab you. I love color. Color's my favorite thing. This is one of my favorite color palettes, reds and golds and oranges and bronze and light pink all the way you know taking them each of those colors as far as you can go on both sides it's wood mdf board and um the boxes are you do the top first let's say you're doing an image glue it on paint it when it's kind of like you know, i know where i'm going with it then i put the sides on and then they get painted the epoxy resin, and that's put on afterwards. The purpose of that is to just finish it. It gives it that beautiful, glossy finish. Ultimately, we will do a grid on the wall, 
I have a picture of the old Hamilton School, I have a picture of the world, I have an old-fashioned kind of schoolroom, I have a picture of Mary Wheeler. I like to have pattern, I like to have image, I like to have relief, and I like to put all those things together and on top of that I have flat and then different size surfaces. So I like to have a lot going on. Wheeler decided that they wanted to have a sculpture collection. It was a juried process. The whole Wheeler community was involved. I was working with a committee. You know, we arrived at something that the school felt great about and um, I felt great about. The piece is titled Spectrum and it refers to uh, all the different colors that comprise white light or um, that are found in a rainbow. The chair itself, it loosely refers to the myth of a solar chariot that travels across the heavens during the course of the day. It's also derived from some text in the Old Testament that talks about how the prophet Ezekiel sees God descending on a throne. So this is a very pared down version of that. The piece is made out of kiln cast glass. I make a model out of insulation foam and that model of the chair is encased in a high temperature plaster which then is taken out of the, the mold and that results in the mold that is put in the kiln. The glass is put in a container over the mold which uh, then when the whole thing is heated up the glass flows through a hole in the bottom of the container into the mold. Then it casts, so it all happens in the kiln at about 1500 degrees. The piece is comprised of 45 chairs, which was a wonderful challenge in terms of casting, polishing, mixing the different glasses to get the color graduations where they would be segueing from one color into the next color family. The glass that I work with is tinted lead crystal. I've always struggled with color and this was a, a wonderful opportunity to learn about it and to create these transitions which was really exciting for me and I learned a lot and I'm looking forward to applying what I learned to the next body of work which will this is the stepping stone for that. I built a mock-up of the shelving configuration here at Wheeler at my studio so that I could very carefully compose all the, the colors. I'm thrilled by the way it turned out and with glass there are always surprises so um, that's true of this piece. There are things about it that I never could have anticipated in advance. I love the way it looks. It feels as if it was meant to be here. There's an ambiguity to it that's wonderful, where you can read the piece from right to left, or from left to right, or from top to bottom, or from bottom to top. It doesn't hit you over the head and tell you how to interpret it. What I'm trying to suggest with the piece is that there are an infinite number of colors in light, that these colors are all around us all the time. And thank you again, always. First of all, I'm thinking, in my view, what is my concept and uh, public art projects is different because there's many things. And I propose two or three ideas, a little maquettes, and cardboard and drawings. Dan Miller and all those teachers, they say, Agustin, just do it. That was my first open door in this project. The first aspect was the school. The children is uh, 
the main group of persons who will be every day looking what does it mean. So it's very sensitive. And uh, secondly, the great challenge was the walls. You know, it has four or five walls. The walls is easy if you have a, a great idea. And uh, always, since I start this mural, I chose the idea to talk about the wind, specifically wind and air. Here, this huge, huge spiral represent something like a Holocaust Museum. I take that idea of Holocaust Museum in this mural as Air Museum. It's a parallel of Holocaust Museum. So that's why this is huge, serious. So the idea of this project was nothing was made. Finally, the result was amazing. It's an, <laughs> it's an enigma. It's an enigma because everything was painting in my mind. And every day, many teachers, students, children were asking me, what are you doing in this side, for example? And I say, okay, I don't know, <laughs> only it's, uh, it, it is painting in my interior, and I don't know if it will be fine. So it's, it's like an art, uh, I don't have answers. The art is abstract. If you are working with ideas, with abstract, subjective ideas, you cannot give a rational answer. I'm terribly irrational. I'm working like a, a wild person in an empty space. Only my mind probably knows a little bit. So my mind is one and myself is other. <laughs> so that's uh, why it's fascinating, this, uh, this world of uh, mural art projects.